everybody. Um, two weeks ago, Yunsa gave us a very eye-opening seminar about finding the best of ourselves. And during his seminar, he told us about four different personality types that we generally fall under. Can I generalize them as analytic, methodic, um, creative, and empathic? It's okay, right? Okay. So, Yunse also told us that um, we should have control of our emotions and how we lose control of our emotions under times of stress. So, during the question and answer period, I raised my hand and asked him, why can't we show our emotions? What if it's understandable for the analytic and the methodic people not to show their emotions, but maybe creative and empathic people need to show their emotions. And he told me that it's not about not showing them, but to have control over them. He means, don't yell at your boss because you're mad. Don't go and punch someone in the metro bus just because they pushed you. Don't cry in front of an opponent who might use it against you. And many other things like this. These are acceptable adult um, social norms, which are understandable. But still, one thing questions my mind. I am expected not to lose control of my emotions under times of stress. But stress is the main reason why I'm losing control of my emotions in the first place. So we have a loop over here. And I'm thinking, if stress is causing me to lose my emotions, maybe I should not be controlling them. Maybe they're out of control for a reason. And to give you some examples, I want to show you Jackson Pollock. Jackson Pollock wanted to be a prominent artist, just like Pablo Picasso. He wanted to find his signature in artwork. And that's why he was drawing again and again and again, trying and trying and trying to be like Pablo Picasso, even the gestures. But things were not working out for him. He just couldn't come up with it. And this built so much stress on his shoulders. In the end, he started to get so mad at Pablo Picasso. One day he got drunk and he started to shout, Fuck you, Pablo Picasso. You found every single thing that can be found in the artwork and left us no shit to create. He was so mad. And right after this emotional burst out, this drunkness and everything, you know, he did not control his emotions and let them all out. And in the end, he came to a point of stability and he went back to his art room and with his canvas in front of him, with a paintbrush in his hand, looking down and thinking as if he was hypnotized, he saw that the paint was starting to drip down on the canvas. And that's when he realized what his signature artwork was going to be. Today, Jason Pollock is a very prominent artist, and he has a signature work in art, and his artwork is studied by physicians and mathematicians for their fractal quality. I want to show you one more example, which you might not enjoy as much, Britney Spears. <laughs> we all know that she was young, um, she was famous at a very, very young age, maybe too young to, to um, how do you say, to fight with you know, all those people watching her. During her adolescent period, she was in front of all our eyes. People were watching her, people were judging her, people were telling how she did this and that wrong. And in the end, this emotional stress made her go crazy. She shaved her head, she started banging and slamming on cars, she had lost control of her emotions. Everyone was saying, oh my god, Britney Spears has lost it. But this emotional breakdown, this emotional build-up that was let out by her, helped her come to a point of stability. And today, she has gone into a venture of helping people with a little amount of money to learn how to dance. She has a special academy just for this. And she is much more stronger and much more, how do you say it, um, much more productive than she was before that emotional breakdown. 
There's a book called Crazy Like Us. It actually means crazy like US, crazy like the American people. And it tells the difference between how different kind of um, cultures react to stressful moments and trauma traumatic events and so on. This is how Turks do it, and most of Middle Eastern do it. You go crazy, you go, you, you roll on the floor. You can just let it all out. There's people special in the funerals who come to the house just to make everyone cry again and again and again, to let it all, all out. There are people that work especially for this, you know, so that everyone can let their emotions out. There's this side of the story, and then there's a, another type of funeral where people are expected to act normal for them, not to show too much emotions, to cry maybe, but within limits, and to have control of their emotions. And then we have the Latin Americans, who take dead bodies to a football match for the one last time. <laughs> so everyone actually has a different reaction and different way of showing their emotions. <coughs> so it's the same with a mother giving birth, you know. When a mother is giving birth, there's so much emotions. She's stressed, she's happy, she doesn't know what's going to happen. Her body is hurting, so much is happening. So in the end, what happens? She starts to cry, she starts to shout, she, she wants to just hurt everyone around her. If you go to that mother and say, hey, come on, control your stress, you're an adult right now, she's going to eat you alive. <laughs> Sometimes we need to shout, sometimes we need to cry, sometimes we need to bang, yell. Sometimes we need to let all those emotions burst out of us to come to a point of stability where we can um, help, where we can find a chance to give birth to something creative. Thank you very much.